Hey everybody, it's Lon Simon. We're back at CES 2024. We are visiting our CES sponsor, SK. This company sponsored our trip and all of our coverage, so we greatly appreciate that. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at their demo room here because AI, as many of you know, is a major theme of this show and tech in general. And SK has been a leader in this area covering everything from software, but also to hardware, to power management, to cooling, telecommunications, they do a lot. They're one of the biggest companies in Korea. And what we're gonna do is a short tour of all the things they're doing and how all these things work together. So let's have a look. Now, in order for a data center to work, you need, of course, servers, and those servers need memory. And one of the things the SK Group is working on is making sure that memory in your server is working properly. Now, these are under wraps here because there are some proprietary things, but basically they've got very advanced memory testing capabilities to ensure that the RAM that you're putting into that server is working properly and that server can be as powerful and as efficient as possible. Because when a server's not working correctly, it uses more power, users don't get the data they're looking for, they repeat their queries, and making sure your RAM is in good health is very important for all of this stuff to work. Now, next to me here is a server that is currently running right now some AI applications. And the reason why they have this out here is because they are demoing a product that they make that is a memory chip. However, this chip can do computation in addition to working as memory. So it can do some of the workload that you need for inferring patterns when you're doing AI applications. Inference can be what the user is looking for, what kind of patterns is it seeing. And the faster that you can do this and the faster that you can get the information assembled, the less power that you need to do it. Now these chips are on a board like this. This is called the Amex card. And there are two FPGAs there, very large ones. And those work in conjunction with the memory and this is optimized for specific AI applications. In fact, they were telling me that uh, versus a regular GPU that's more of a generalized type of hardware, you can significantly increase your execution time or decrease the execution time to make things more power efficient and deliver results to the user more quickly. Now this looks like a little SATA SSD, but it is in fact a memory module that can fit in a SATA SSD slot and you can attach it directly to your PCI Express bus to get more memory for your server. So even if you are out of physical space for memory, you might have room for some of these, and that of course will allow your server to run more efficiently, and you might be able to keep using the ones you have versus adding more to the mix. Now we talked a lot about hardware optimized for artificial intelligence, but what about all the data that you have to deal with for large scale databases and whatnot? Well, this card from SK called the CXL CMS 2.0, is hardware optimized for vector DB, which is the kind of database structure that you typically see in a lot of these massive AI models. And like the other solution we saw over there before, it has computational memory on board. So a lot of the work can happen right inside the memory and these queries can happen a lot quicker. And when you do that, you lose, use less power and the users get their information quicker. So it's a real win-win for everyone. So now we're gonna transition to see how some of this hardware gets implemented on the software side. And this is a really cool solution from uh, SK called the AI Media Studio. Now you've heard of upscaling before, but this is really crazy upscaling. So check this out. We've got a 360 by 240 video here and the artificial intelligence software and hardware working together from SK can upscale this to 4K and you maintain or gain in some cases some significant detail just by running it through that process. So text that's really tiny and not visible can be uh, visibly read. Uh, you can see texture on items. Uh, really awesome uh, system here to get your video upscaled. But in addition to doing this, it does other things. So it can transcribe the audio that it's hearing. It can also do things like in a song, like we're watching here, can pull out the individual instruments using artificial intelligence. So you can actually take a single audio file or track and break it out into its constituent forms if you have some more editing to do. I know I could use that sometimes when we're out here at CES and we have audio trouble. So this is just one example of all of that hardware working to do things like this for users and do it quickly. So now let's take the AI and the data and put it together. SK is one of the largest telecom providers in Korea. And as a result of that, they have a lot of data about how people move throughout cities. And you can make some really interesting decisions based on that data, both for government and for business. So check this out. This is a map of a city developed from all the data they have of people moving around. I've got an alert down here, so I'm gonna click on this. 
and click Learn More. And when I jump in here, I see that there's a Costco equivalent uh, over here on this area. And all of the customers for that warehouse club are traveling a pretty far distance to get there. Nobody here is going to the warehouse club. They're all coming from over here. So maybe there's a case to be made that moving that warehouse club over to this yellow spot there might actually cut down on traffic, make people happier because they're not having to travel as far. It's going to cut down on CO2 emissions. It's also going to cut down on energy usage because people can get to the store they're trying to get to more quickly. And what's neat about this is that because they have all this telecom data and they can see where people are going, a business can be informed about where their customers are actually coming from. And when they have that information, they can more efficiently place their stores to make everything better for everyone. Now we're here with some virtual furry friends here to talk about another product in SK's lineup. This is their uh, Excalibur system, and it's designed to analyze x-rays of your pet. It can look at bone issues, it can look at heart signs, and a few other issues that vets typically look at on an x-ray like this. However, when you have artificial intelligence assisting, you don't have to rely just on the human set of eyes. The AI can detect things that maybe the vet misses so that the diagnosis can be done right the first time. And of course, that makes people happier. It reduces energy usage, and it ensures that our pets have a longer lifespan. And this is just another example of how the hardware and software works together. Now, in addition to the server hardware and the software analysis, there's also hardware that is specialized for collecting data. And that's what SK's intelligence vision is all about here. These devices are designed to replace a standard microscope with something a lot smarter. And I'm going to bring my friend Michael over here to tell us more about it. SK has developed the micro vision sensor, which uses semiconductor technology for lens-free viewing of cells and other small microscale entities. You can place a sample of saliva or blood or urine on this uh, sensor here and plug it right into your cell phone or computer, press test, and immediately get a result. We also have here the Soul Count. This is a cell counter device. It uses the same semiconductor lens-free technology. You pipette a sample onto the cartridge, plug it right into the sensor device here, and you can instantly get your results on quantity and cell viability in 10 to 15 seconds per sample. Moving along here, we have the Soul Live. This uses the same technology as well, but for a cell cultivation process. This can fit inside of an incubator with its small portable size. A microscope could not do so before. And this simplifies the process of tracking cell growth over the cultivation process. The groundbreaking technology exemplified by these products it's part of the reason why we've won the CES Innovation Award for Soul Count in 2023 and also for Soul Live in 2024. All of these products represent a global solution package that can provide underserved communities with the technology they need. Now this is the AI quantum camera and this has both onboard artificial intelligence and it can send things off to a data center for further analysis. And as you can see here, it looks like a run-of-the-mill security camera but it can do a lot more just within the hardware. So let's take a look over here at the screen to look at some of the things it can do just on the hardware side. So it can detect fires and smoke. It can detect what they call a violence situation where maybe somebody's getting assaulted. And it can also look if somebody happens to fall down in front of the camera. All cases where you need to get somebody there quickly to help people. Another thing that it can do that is pretty neat is provide anonymization while still providing a surveillance environment. So this is actually a real-time view of what the camera is picking up right in front of us. I'm right here. You might be able to see me waving there. But you can't see the people. You can see what's going on around the people. So if you had an area where you just wanted to make sure the building wasn't burning down, but you didn't want to take a record of everybody that comes through, the camera can actually filter out the people and make sure that uh, the area that you're surveying is still safe. And it's got a couple of different levels of that anonymity, anonymity that we're looking at here. So this is one of the lower levels, but that one, of course, is the upper level there. Now, as far as servers are concerned, the camera can also send images up for further analysis. So here's me, and as you can see here, it described what I was wearing, and it even knew that I was holding a microphone. And so this might be useful in a retail environment. If somebody uh, was a suspect in shoplifting or whatever, you can get a description that can very quickly get out to 
people who can help you. Now, we've seen the hardware components. We've seen how the software now works with the hardware components. But what about the data center that you need to drive all of this and the energy that it needs and its cooling needs? Well, SK has a lot for that as well. Now, SK is one of the biggest energy companies in Korea. And they also have taken AI technology and applied it to large-scale energy management for these types of data centers. Now, many of us have reliable grid power, but many of us do not. Or maybe some of us want to do more green energy generation from renewables, but renewables don't work the same way all the time. So you have to manage all of this stuff. And so if you've got wind and a solar array and energy storage, it's a lot for a person to manage, but the AI can do that for you. And that's one of the things that SK can provide through their long uh, list of different products and services. Now, if we go over here, we can take a look at how an AI is keeping track of the health of a data center. It can predict things that might be going wrong with a server. It can notify you when you need to look at something. And it's a constant watchdog on everything all at once. And next to this, from the cooling perspective, this is kind of neat. This looks like a tank, but it's in fact a server shelf, if you will, of a bunch of server blades inside of a, a coolant system, a liquid coolant system. They call it uh, liquid immersion cooling. And we actually have an example of one of those server blades immersed in liquid right here. And that liquid is keeping the server cool. So the entire server is inside of liquid right now. And of course, this doesn't short anything out. It's all uh, there for cooling. And when you use liquid to cool your data center, you can cool it much more efficiently. And the hardware works better, too. So you save a lot of energy. You reduce the amount of faults that you might have with all the AI that you're processing through your data center. And of course, customers are happier in the end. Now, you might have heard of quantum computing. And it's something that isn't quite here yet, but people are very afraid of it, especially related to the encryption of data. The reason is, is that quantum computers, when they become available, will very easily be able to crack security keys. So you have to get ready for this revolution. And that is something that SK has here called the quantum key distribution device. And what this does is it generates keys that are basically not going to get destroyed by a quantum computer when they become available. And I've got my friend Christopher here to try to explain to me how this works. Because my understanding from talking to you earlier is that even though this looks like a regular data connection, we are actually just sending photons of light to create keys. I'm going to pass the mic to you so you can explain this to the audience better than I can. Absolutely, that's correct. Thank you. And really the idea here is to replace mathematically based public key cryptography with keys that are generated and distributed using quantum physics. So we're actually uh, encoding um, quantum states on single photons, transmitting them across standard fiber optic cables. On the other side, you have single photon detectors that are observing those quantum states. And uh, with some communication between the two of them, they end up uh, agreeing on keys that could be used in AES encryption, uh, which is an encryption scheme that uh, is, is quantum safe. And so that's the idea. And um, what we have here is a demonstration that shows what happens if you had an eavesdropper on the line. So basically, you have a measured quantum bit error rate here. And um, the more I turn the dial up on this eavesdropping tool, it will remove photons, delay them, and introduce them back onto the fiber cable, essentially simulating an eavesdropper trying to steal data, sneak it back onto the fiber unnoticed. And so what you can see here is when I turn this dial, we immediately see an increase in the quantum bit error rate which corresponds to an eavesdropper's attack. I'll just turn up a little bit more. And so what happens in this case is the system has detected an attack of an eavesdropper and will stop generating and distributing the keys. Now, what we're talking about here is using quantum mechanics to make all of this work. Now, my understanding, very limited understanding of quantum mechanics, is that when you observe some quantum function, it changes the dynamic. So is that how you get these two things to agree? Yeah, that's part of it. Is, uh, that's part of the security of the protocol, is uh, the mere act of observing the quantum object will permanently alter it. And that's what we saw here in the demonstration, is that the eavesdropper has been detected because uh, there's a, an increase in quantum bit error rate due to that change. So this is really the future, right? This is a whole new field. It's, it's going to be something that has to, I think, uh, happen. Um, for people that are just entering their career, you're not an, a, a quantum physicist. You're, you're what? 
I'm, uh, I had a degree in uh, computer science, cybersecurity, optical networking. So uh, yes, it's, uh, this is the fear we're trying to protect against these emerging threats of the quantum computer, which is going to be a serious problem in the very near future. So if you're in the computer engineering field right now, you don't have to go back to school for quantum physics. You can figure this out without that. Absolutely. I think as this technology matures, it's going to be like any other technology that uh, you know it's easy enough for the standard person to understand and implement. Uh, and these are very user-friendly at this point today. Pretty amazing stuff, and uh, hopefully we will future-proof all of your <laughs> private data thanks to the QKD system here. So I want to thank SK for not only sponsoring our CES coverage today, but also inviting me into what they're developing in a whole host of different areas. I didn't know a lot about this, these things until I got here, and I've learned a lot about how data centers work and how all these things come together, and hopefully you learned something about it as well. So we've got a lot more CES coverage to come. And again, a big thank you to SK for sponsoring this year's coverage of this big show. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Zeibin. Thanks for watching.